Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo, and we are here today to talk Destiny 2. That's right, guys, I've been playing the beta over on the PlayStation 4 all morning. I put about seven hours in, ran my way through the uh, Homecoming, the single-player opening mission. I uh, played the Strike twice, and then played about four and a half hours, five hours of PvP, of Crucible. And that's what we're going to talk about today. There's a lot to talk about with Destiny 2. There really is. I'm like, where do I start? You know what? Let's talk about the thing that held my attention the most. I could have kept rerunning that strike over and over again. Um, not that it wasn't amazing, but we only had one difficulty, so I eventually dove into the Crucible. Fingers crossed that Bungie had rebuilt the Crucible and built something truly special. And I'd like to think that they did. At least my first impressions have led me to believe that the Crucible is a completely revamped, repolished, and retuned player versus player experience for Destiny. It feels a million times better than anything Destiny 1 ever had going on. I'm somebody who played a lot of Destiny PvP early days. Uh, I kind of fell out of it because I think long term it didn't really hold my attention. I didn't really enjoy it. I think it was way too driven by stats and supers and spam. It just, it wasn't the skill-based experience that I was hoping it was going to be. It didn't harken back to the days of Halo as much as I had hoped it would be. Destiny 2 PvP Specifically when you play in the competitive playlist, which features the countdown game mode, basically a search and destroy type mode, it just goes through the roof, man. It feels so tactics driven, so team focused. Uh, you're only getting grenades and supers maybe once or twice a match if you're lucky. There's so much coordination that has to go on between the four members of your team to push the objective and plant and to defend and to defend on the defending side, you know, uh, working on, you know, saving your revives, utilizing your revives, heavy ammo pickups, which only happen once per round, and they're only for one player. They've just done so many smart things to remove the spam, to remove all the stat-based sort of RNG nonsense, and to focus on gunfights. Gunfights, again and again and again. I'm like, I'm using my primary, I'm switching, switching into my uh, kinetic, from my kinetic to my energy-based primary, I'm occasionally using my heavy weapon. Supers just feel so tuned in terms of their value now. Uh, I'm not talking like long-term balance, but the fact that you get a super so rarely means that it's so much more important to conserve it, to use it in the right situation. I had some pretty clutch moments today, one specifically where we were pushing into defuse. The enemy team had just uh, just planted. We were you know, pretty evenly matched still, and I heard the warlock pop super. So I'm thinking, oh man, I'm about to deal with a you know, with the with the Dawnbreaker or whatever over here. Let's go ahead and pop my golden gun, and hopefully I can two-shot this, uh, you know, two-shot this, two-shot this Warlock down, shut down that super, and then we can, you know, go in and clean up. And that's exactly what it did. Shut down the Warlock, went in, got another double kill, went ahead and defused, and won the match. It, was, it just felt so clutch. So you go from supers just being this thing that you spam in match again and again and again. Ah, uh, look at my double kill, look at my triple kill. You know, they, they become so frustrating to be killed by them in Destiny 1. Like, getting killed by a Nova Bomb or... You know, the sun, it was just not a good time. And the more you played, the more frustrating it got. You never want a game to reach that point. Right now, again, at least in the five and a half hours I played, it's just like supers are these clutch tools. You know, some guy uses a super, you counter it. You guys do the best you can to focus the guy with the super. They can use it to turn the tide. It just felt amazing. And the same can be said for, like, grenades, you know. Grenades and the heavy weapon ammo. Like I said, they're, they're such vital elements now that can really turn the battle. You know, they can put you in a 1v3, 1v4 situation even, and let you pull out on top if the other team isn't really on their toes. It's not because it's overpowered. It's not because that individual item is like God's here. It's just because there's so much room for error on either side. And that was the thing I kept saying. I was playing with the Nickety and Butter Bar, and my big thing was there's me blaming myself for mistakes. You know, I'm playing on a PlayStation controller, a little bit heavier on the joysticks, and the PlayStation controller doesn't really like that. I'm, I'm doing melees in the middle of gunfights on accident. Good. I was going to say, you might be able to get those two vibes. I'm up and ready to go. I got one down. down. Yeah. You've got 30 seconds. Tony, you might be able to come after me, but I don't know. Nice! Melee, man! Every wow. time with this you controller, dude! Him, you shot him and then you hit no, him. No, I meleeed. Still... I didn't shoot him. That was the problem. <sighs> I didn't even want to throw the knife. It was an accident. The sticks are so sensitive on these controllers. I'm so pissed, man. Making poor decisions, not rushing uh, the objective during, you know, the enemy's defusal cycle quick enough. It was just all down to, like, poor tactical decision making. You know, tactical errors. Like, I could have done that. We could have done that as a team. Our strategy could have been better. We could have communicated that better. 
those are the things you want to be talking about at the end of a match of a player versus player experience. You don't want to be like, oh, God, dude, that guy just, like, kept stacking me with the, you know? You don't want that. You want it to be driven by the core gun play and by player choice and tactics. Now, I did play quite a bit of control, and I thought that felt really good as well. Control is obviously still going to be a little bit more chaotic uh, than a sort of last man standing 4v, uh, 4v4 type mode like Countdown. But having the four players in control, I think, really changed things. The four-player Crucible, I think, is one of the best decisions they ever made. You know, even before we talk about the reduction to grenade spam and super spam and the way stats uh, no longer affect the rate at which you gain your super and things like that, or your grenade for that matter, or your melee for that matter, you know, those are all great changes. But the 4v4, I think, was at the core of that, you know, what started that great change. Everything else is just like... You know, the rest of the puzzle pieces coming together to just make this experience that feels so tuned and so perfect. Now, when we talk about the core gunplay, this is obviously going to be something that's going to be much debated. I'm not here to talk, like, current meta or what feels the best or what I think is, like, this is the best gun in the game right now. I used a lot of the different weapons that dropped in PvP as loot, um, from hand cannons, both kinetic and energy-based, to different scout rifles. You know, we get that automatic scout rifle at spawn. I got, a, like, a semi-auto heavy-hitting one that I thought kicked a lot of ass. Um, you know, very focused on headshots, though. Precision shots, landing headshots, still very important. I think the SMGs is, is something worth talking about. The great thing about the SMGs is they effectively replace the shotguns. You know, so the shotguns were this sort of incredibly hard-to-balance piece of kit for Bungie. They can never get it right. You know, either you're going to have a shotgun that's useless, that feels like you're shooting, you know, peas at the guy, or it's too powerful, or certain shotgun rolls end up being too powerful, and they screw with the meta. You know, it was so hard. So shifting sniper rifles, fusion rifles, shotguns, grenade launchers now, rocket launchers, LMGs, all down in that heavy weapon slot means that you can make them powerful and potent. You can worry less about long-term balance and just say, well, that's a weapon that you only get once a match per player, per round, you know, like whatever. You can't use it all the time. So yeah, we can make it powerful and it can become a force to be reckoned with. They instead bring the SMG into that ranks, which is no longer one shot, which does have some pretty incredible recoil to deal with, but they give you something that feels reasonable and powerful and it feels counterable. It doesn't feel like this one hit, just god gun. It feels like, oh, that guy's got an SMG, okay, I gotta counter this, I gotta land headshots quick, I gotta get out, I gotta disengage, whatever I need to do. I just think that right now the weapon balance, uh, the weapon variety, I don't wanna say balance, the weapon variety and how the weapons affect the core gunplay feels incredible it feels really good um and beyond that it was nice to see some new iterations of returning favorites so fusion rifles for example have seen two variants now we got a traditional shoot fusion rifle with the multi-burst cluster and i even picked up a single shot like railgun style fusion rifle that fires a charged single fire long range projectile so a lot of variety going on there even with the smgs different fire rates we saw you know the hand cannons with different fire rates and the way we can tweak everything I think Destiny PvP is in a very... Destiny 2 PvP is in a very kick-ass place right now, guys. I'm so excited for it. Like, I haven't had this much fun. And one of the crazy things, I see a lot of people, oh, I did really well in Destiny 2 PvP. Here's the big thing, the reason I think everybody's kicking a lot of ass. We've got a lot of people, at least the people who are saying these sorts of things, that are pretty good at first-person shooters, right? You remove all that spam. You remove all the randomness of having, you know, abilities that are charged through statistics, you know, having one guy who has a supercharge faster than yours. You put everyone sort of on the same playing field, and you make a game mode like Countdown, or even if you throw in something like Control, very team-focused, very objective-based. Again, you've made this a much more, like, a much more sterile experience, focused on gunplay, and the good players, the teams that have tactics, they start to shine through. You know, they start to stick out above the rest. And all of a sudden, everybody else realizes, oh, I can't just spam grenades. I get one grenade every three rounds. I barely got my super. Only one guy gets heavy ammo. Oh, wow. Okay, I got to work on my gun skills. I actually got to shoot somebody in the head three times. I got to outgun them. And that's where the game started to feel like the good old days of Halo. Landing BR shots. And let me switch to my secondary. I got a pistol. I got SMG. Let's clean this guy up. Like, you know, the use of multiple weapons in different engagements at different distances. Working with your team to focus single targets to get kills quicker. You know, to win a fight, to come back from, uh, you know, a fight that you could have lost. It just felt incredible, man. I'm glowing about it because it felt so good. I play a lot of first-person shooters, player versus player. And booting up Destiny 2 and just after the first two matches, just feeling things start to click. And just feeling how just well-scaled, <laughs> just how well-placed all of the elements of, of Destiny 2 PvP felt in the Crucible was a really... Smile and grin-inducing experience. And I'm going to leave it at that. 
I'm definitely going to be talking a lot more about Destiny, doing more Destiny 2 coverage throughout the beta. I'd like to talk a little bit more about weapons and how they've been handled, get a little bit deeper into the, the different classes and how they perform in P PvP. We'll also talk about the PvE, you know, the strikes, some of the new enemy types we've got to deal with. There's so much to talk about just in this beta. It's not as insanely content-rich as I think many people thought it was going to be, but it is feature-rich. And again, we're seeing, you know, the way that armor works now, the way that the three statistics, resilience, and, and, you know, all that stuff works, and how they affect your character, how you're going to be able to make different builds in PvP that give players variety, again, without having that, you know, sort of meta-statistic-driven mind game that Destiny 1 was. There's a lot to be excited about. If you're not playing the beta right now in Early Access, it's going to be going live on the 21st this week for everyone on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. They're going to be doing a PC beta sometime in August. Seriously, download it. It's going to be open beta 21st for you guys on the console side of things and play it. Especially if you're looking for solid PvP with a game that's going to have a massive PvE component. Destiny 2 is shaping up gameplay-wise at least, core gameplay-wise, to be freaking outstanding. Any questions, any thoughts of your own regarding your personal experience with Destiny 2's PvP, Feel free to let me know down in the comments section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, remember to play smart, remember to play to challenge yourself, but most importantly, remember to play for fun.